specifically making something that can detect it uh, as a potential device. So if you look at this picture here, this is a picture um, of the aftermath of what happened in uh, Fukushima, Japan. And what's happened is a nuclear power plant has collapsed and it's not working anymore. So they're using uh, water to extinguish the fires. But what this picture doesn't display is the uh, exposure to radioactive material and radioactive waste, and particularly radioactive uh, exposure like to fish and then potentially people eating and ingesting that same fish and being exposed to beta radiation. Um, in particular, we're looking at uh, strontium-90, and that's important because that's an emitter of beta, beta radiation. But strontium-90 is also used in medical applications, and it can be used as a tracker for cancer. So the importance and application of this beta thing. So I'll give you a little bit more background on beta radiation. What exactly is beta radiation? Beta radiation. So it could be a high energy electron or positron. But specifically in my case, I'm looking at the electron. Um, the problem with identifying beta radiation is that it's a broad energy spectrum. So you can have uh, these, these particles with energy levels from the kilo electron volts to the um, mega electron volts. And if you look at this picture, you have alpha, beta, and gamma, so the range of types of radiation. And just to give an idea of where beta falls, it falls in the middle of these two. So what have I been doing for the past uh, few days and past weeks? I've been looking at these current radiation devices and what we have available in the lab. So I want to truly understand each of these three devices. So I started with the surface barrier detector, scintillation detector, and the Geiger counter. You guys have probably heard of the Geiger counter a pretty common radiation device. So what the Geiger counter does, it, it can detect radiation, but there's a con to that. It doesn't tell you what type of radiation it is. So you can say, oh, I have an alpha source or a beta source or a gamma source, but the Geiger counter will not tell you that. It'll just tell you like the intensity. Um, the scintillator detector is a little bit more refined in that it gives you a spectrum, but it also has its cons in that it requires a high energy, uh, high, ener like high voltage to run. Uh, and it's kind of big and bulky and heavy. And the same uh, fault with the surface barrier detector in that it takes a lot of energy to run and you have to, uh, yeah. So how can we improve these devices and make them into a small handheld device? And that's where the beta pin comes in. So the beta pin is most uh, modeled after the scintillator detector. And it's going to be a three-part device comprised of a scintillator or scintillating material, a uh, silicon multiplier, Fire section and then electronics. So we're taking this big device and trying to compact it into the small size. So a scintillator, what exactly does a scintillator do and what exactly does a scintillating material do? So you have radiation and you have a material, a scintillating material, and that's a picture of what common plastic scintillating material looks like. It's a material that will luminesce when it's hit by radiation. So you have radiation coming in, it excites the electrons in the material. And after the, the material has been excited, it's going to emit uh, phot like photons because of the change in the energy speeds. And to understand that, that's basically I'm describing, which is the photoelectric effect. So the next part in the device is the silicon photomultiplier. And this is how the device is going to be really small and compact. So initially, the scintillator, scintillating device uses this photomultiplying tube, which is like a series of photodiodes. Uh, but what we have now, new technology, yeah, um, is a device that's so small. So if you look at this picture here, it's a picture of a euro, and then you have the new and approved silicon photomultipliers. And that's what we're trying to implement in our new device. 
And the important thing to note about photomultipliers is you can take a single photon and then uh, produce a ripple effect or an avalanche effect. The next part in the device would be the electronics. So we have the scintillating material going through what now devices use our photomultiplying to, but we're going to replace that with the photomultiplying, like the silicon photomultipliers. And the electronics amplify the, sig amplify the signal and make it readable to a user. So this past week and past few days, I've been working on understanding the beta, beta spectra, comparing the different devices, and truly like reverse engineering each of these devices to try to make some device that encompasses all of the elements into a better, a better, more useful device. And so I used a silicon surface barrier detector, and I, com I came up with this spectrum using a strontium-90 source. And the spectrum tells you more information about the device and the device ranges and the limitations of the device more so than a strontium source or a beta source because we know that the beta source is very broad in energy. Um, I also have started working on design and taking apart some of the scintillators that we have in the lab. And my next step is to compare different types of photodiodes to get the most, the best and the most reliable. And I started to develop an electronic scheme for the beta plan. And so next I'll start thinking about components and materials, scattering materials to build the device. And this is my timeline. So first week research and asking a lot of questions. Uh, this week I'll work, I've been working on understanding the spectra and design. Next week I hope to start building the, the circuit and gathering materials. By week four I hope to have like a printed circuit board and a working finish test of it of the beta pin, and then by week five and six, I hope to integrate all of these things together and have a working prototype. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions for So did you understand that? I mean, it's the photomultipliers, which have become so much smaller in recent years? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's gone from this you can't really see the scale of this photomultiplier to compare to this device, but it's like almost like arm length, and now it's very yeah. compact and small. Almost like, like a silicon wafer here. So if you just look at the green square, that's three millimeter by three millimeter. And that's comparatively big. <laughs> so you can get these down two millimeter by millimeter or something like this. Right, the final uh, presenter is Kirsten. I didn't talk too fast. I love it. Yeah.